I'm Roxanne Vainuku, Public Information Officer for West Valley City. We understand that there are many questions surrounding coronavirus and how it might impact operations here in our city. City Manager Wayne Pyle and Mayor Ron Bigelow answer some of the frequently asked questions. Well, this is really an administrative action and we do it so that we have some flexibility. Uh, if anything should arise, we can respond to it much more quickly under this order. As well, it interacts with uh, state and federal governments so that we can interact with them so that if we have emergency expenditures, some of those could be re reimbursed at the national level. Well, certainly the police and fire departments are open and doing business normal. Public safety is paramount no matter what. Uh, but those areas where we have groups that would normally congregate together, the Family Fitness Center, uh, the Cultural Celebration Center, uh, the Harmon Senior Home, uh, certainly uh, the Maverick Center, places like that where groups are gathering, we will have those closed. Well, for the City Council, we have scheduled a meeting for March 17th. That will be held, but we're trying to do it electronically. Uh, although we had previously planned to cancel and have canceled meetings on the 24th of March and the 31st of March as a part of our normal schedule. Our meetings will continue after that, but they will highly likely be electronic. We may have one or two key people here at the office. We are making arrangements for the public to participate, and that will most likely be electronically or some other format. With today's technology, uh, we all have, at least all council members, have an iPad or a computer, and we're going to use those to be able to communicate while not physically being present. We had actually practiced a little bit of this over the last year or two where we had a call in. Like for example, I went on vacation, but so that I could still participate, I called on my phone and it hooked up into the council meeting. I was able to listen in or ask questions. With new technology, we're going to actually be able to see a picture of one another and communicate. Uh, it's just a matter of using what's there now. Uh, citizens have long been able to watch our council meetings on the internet uh, and if they actually miss uh, doing it as when we're live, it's recorded and they can look at it then. We're working out those details now. Clearly, if someone wants to ask a question or provide us information, they can use the old-fashioned method of sending us a letter or an email. But if they want to actually participate in the meeting, we will figure out a way to do that. We believe that the electronic process we have now will allow them to listen in. We're working on how to have them ask a question, and we're working out the details of that. And we've got, tomorrow night will be our test on the 17th, but we'll figure that out because we want our citizens to participate. Uh, this is a crisis that we're dealing with, but we're going to get through it. Most people, fortunately, will not be heavily impacted, but we want you to be aware we want you to take the steps that have been recommended, but check your neighbors, especially if they're elderly and in poor health, especially if they're small children. Uh, the hoarding that is going on will actually hurt some people because they can't buy some of those necessities. And so we say, just watch out for people in your neighborhood. And we're going to get through this. We'll, most things will happen normally. Government will con continue to function, and public safety will still be there. So we know that there are one or two confirmed cases. We also have a number of cases that are suspected. So right now we're probably around a handful, let's call it half a dozen cases, but as you've mentioned, that's going to change rapidly. There's a number of ways that uh, we're looking at um, protecting our residents and at the same time maintaining the essential emergency services that we've got to be doing. So the first way in which we're protecting the residents is making as much information as we can available to them through all of our social media means, interviews like this one, 
uh, efforts like that. The second way that we are um, taking care of our residents is by continuing the essential operations we have as, as a city. So as the mayor mentioned earlier, our police uh, services are still open on a 24-hour basis as are our paramedics, as are any other services that we would need to respond to an emergency. Um, in addition to that, we're looking at right now and have been for the past week setting up our plans to deal with the eventuality of some of our own employees falling sick and, and maintaining services despite that. So we are doing that. We're confident that we're ready to do that and so those services will continue on as well. We have very strict cleaning protocols in place. We, in fact, have uh, looked at those. We've always had those in place, but we have had multiple occasions over the last week. We've actually been considering this for the last week and more to refine those, strengthen them, kind of emphasize them with the employees as they approach a particular type of call. We also have adopted various levels of response. So let's say the pandemic um, is lighter or moderate or more severe and the, uh, therefore the demands on the call load and service levels increase, we have protocols in place for dealing with that as well. Yes, absolutely, two ways. One, as I mentioned earlier, we've already instituted protocols for the eventuality of, let's say we have fewer first responders, how do we prioritize calls, how do we respond to them, how many do we send, that sort of thing. So we've already examined that and we'll be ready to deal with that eventuality as it arises. The second way is, of course, the health of the first responders themselves. And we also have looked at very specific ways, uh, which in large part mirror the ways that the general population will be screened, possibly uh, treated, quarantined, all those sorts of things. But it will be done on a much quicker and more frequent basis. So we're watching that a lot more closely all the time than, than we necessarily would. So we will be able to catch those situations earlier. You can stay informed about what's happening here in our city by following on our social media or by visiting our website, www.wvc-ut.gov.